Hello, it's Joey, and today I'm making collage cards in a vintage style with texture. It's just a simple new idea that I have for you today. I'll share my thought process and design tips as we go, and as we're using up our scraps, it's a project that brings us joy. This video is a collaboration with a global group of crafters, so I'm really excited to tell you more about this as we collage a few little cards. So hit the subscribe button now, and let's have crafting fun today. The key supplies that I'm using today are index cards. So I've used index cards for the back of the collage, but you could, given the time of year that it is today, you could also use old greeting cards and you could collage on top of those. These particular index cards are 15 centimetres wide by 10 centimetres, which I think is a standard six inches by four inches and these are quite commonly available. The ones I have are not particularly thick and that works well for adding the collage because I'm going to choose to add some texture with just a little bit of sewing but I would say that on all of these although the sewing adds something you could definitely do that by hand or you could add faux stitching so don't feel that you can't make these if you don't have a sewing machine and also the sewing I'm going to do is incredibly easy. To make these collage cards, you'll also want some sort of colour to add to the border. And what I'm using today is something a bit different. I want to make use of everything that I have in my supplies. So I thought I'd have a go with my little paint sticks here. So these are little Brian paint sticks. This is in, in a what looks like a deep chocolate brown. And I'll show you how I use that incredibly easily to make a vintage style border but you could also use watercolour paint you could use pastels and of course you could use an ink pad to just distress the border really easily of course for the image itself whatever we're going to create we want to have some sort of paper pieces and I've just pulled out a whole load of little bits and pieces that I'm going to have a go at using and I thought I'd have a go at a couple of these cards for you today so that I can demonstrate the kind of tips that come to mind for me as I collage a small index card like this. So I have some little postcards that I've cut from a digi. I've just got any little pieces I've cut out of scrapbook paper. You could use images from magazines. I've got some numbers which I think are always really nice and handy and complement a vintage style collage and I've got various tags and labels so I'll talk you through those and show you where they come from as we go through. I've also got a little stamp here and again this has numbers on and sort of scratchy scribbly ledger style columns of numbers and I thought that would be really nice to stamp on top. I have handy my little acrylic stamps that signify a, an envelope, so some sort of postage stamp effect. I might also use a date stamp and of course lots and lots of lovely little bits of scrappy papers. When I create a project and I have a tiny bit left over, I just put it on its side in here and it gradually fills up and I end up with a super eclectic mix of scrumptiously lovely papery bits in all sorts of patterns and no particular filing system other than it is both paper and cardstock and it's just absolutely lovely but it's also rather full. So it is time that I use some of these scraps up. I pulled out a few grungy looking papers so aren't these absolutely gorgeous? I love spots and it's that deep green that to me signifies some ageing and I've also pulled out a few others. This looks to me like wood and I might pull and rip a few little pieces of these and mix with the scraps that I have. Something with a map, looks like a map embedded within the design again, dark and deep, a bit grungy, a bit vintage with lovely little squares, very very faint line of squares in that design and these would all work for me with small pieces combined and mixed but what I have with these is made my life a little bit easy by choosing papers with a palette of those 
glorious mustards and deep brown designs. So I thought I'd show you a few of those that I might pull from. Although I do feel like I'm cheating a little bit if I pull from and use a new piece of paper. I do want to use up my scraps and I think part of the challenge today for me is to use the little paper pieces and make something beautifully eclectic. I also have handy my collection of papers which I've been pulling from when I was making the larger collage to the junk journal that I made recently. So some of you will have seen me make this one. This is now finished. I collaged the cover and I showed you how to do that in a previous video. And you can see some similarity between this cover with the sewing around the outside and a focal point. These little collage cards draw from some of the learnings of this cover but there are some adaptations and some new little tips and tricks that I want to bring in to try to make these have balance and impact and beauty. So I will be pulling ideas from the collage cover. I'm also going to be blending it a little bit with the learnings that we had and took from the collage cards I did some time ago. So these were collage cards from an old calendar and perhaps it's that time of year where we have another old calendar and you can see how I've used again a focal point on these to really make some impact and some layering and matting. So somehow I'm going to bring those together and hopefully share some new ideas so that we can use up our scraps and have some fun and make some beautiful collage cards. So the first step now is to take our index cards and create a border that we will collage within. And to do that, I've had to play with my little paint sticks and the technique that I'm finding works best is to take my little pot of water and initially to wet the index card. It reminds me a little bit of the bauble I've just painted for Christmas using my purples and blues getting that bauble really wet to begin with. In fact let's just do this in ones. I've got a pile of them here. I quite like to do these as a batch. It's a bit quicker and I just get into it and just get into the zone. I don't know if that's how you craft and paint and create. Do you sort of feel yourself getting into it after you've begun? Sometimes it's hard to start but it does get easier. So wet your index card if you're using a paint stick or just go round it with your ink pad. And I'm taking the stick and going direct to the paper and very gently actually adding the pigment and the colour because these paint sticks are quite soft and moving that around and the tip that I have is to allow the end of the stick which on this one is quite blunt so it's quite flat at the end allow that to just rest at an angle on the edge of the index card and what we have then is just a little bit more pigment deeper pigment, deeper colour on the outside of this border. And then I'm taking a brush, it's a fairly large brush, a bit more water and just letting that pigment distribute. Now I'm not rubbing too hard and I'm letting the water do some of the work. And the reason I'm doing that is it prevents the pigment totally distributing into one creamy mass. And I find that I get an effect that looks a little bit more distressed and aged. So I'll just point this out. Let's see. So on the edge of here you can see a rougher smudgy effect and it just blends to something paler as we go in. So I just like that and of course it's up to you what kind of effect you want. But I thought that worked quite well for this vintage style. These paint sticks I just found on Amazon probably a year or so ago and I haven't really made good use of them. So with the spirit of making resolutions that are about getting value for money out of my supplies, I'm definitely going to be using these more and also making use of any other items in my craft room that haven't had much love. So I have a few index cards ready and I'm now going to start building up a collage. And the first thing I want to do is select from some of the papers I've got. So I've just pulled a few out to play with. You can see they're very scrappy, little bits of music paper from an atlas, even a little piece from a glossy book, which I like because it has smaller font. A little bit of music paper, scrapbook paper, even a really narrow piece that I've cut off to narrow something down. 
uh, I have a piece where I've stamped on it and it hasn't quite worked that's okay that would look great a stamp beautiful vintage paper this one is actually in German uh, I've got obviously the front of a pocket that went wrong and I don't want to waste this gorgeous paper some lovely spotted paper something I've gessoed on textures so you can see the variety of pieces I pulled from that box and the other thing I want to have a go at building in and this is part of my learning journey something I want to set myself up for in 2021 is texture and I was given a an amount of wool the other day and I'm, I don't know that I can make anything with knitting but it's got so much in it it's got beautiful deep grungy colours there's a thread of cotton wrapped around it to give more texture and as you can see on this one I feel like it adds something don't know what you think but something 3D it's bouncy and it's just lovely to touch so I'm going to just snip a piece off now and see if we can build that in so let's see what we can do and I will talk you through the steps I take as I fill this card with paper so the first thing I'm going to do is start by putting pieces to the sides and the corners so anything around here and then work in and the technique that I'm going to use will be what we used when we did that collage cover for the junk journal and by that I mean gluing by putting glue just in the middle of your piece of paper so those of you who've made that collage cover so those of you who've made one of these with whatever papers you have will remember that we put the glue in the centre of the pieces but not at the edges and that allows us to combine the pieces more effectively, easily, tucking things under to get that 3D matting effect and achieving a nicer solution, a nicer end result with using under and over of the pieces. So inevitably all of these little cards are going to be a bit different and that's great. The technique just to help is starting by adding some pieces which go to the sides of the collage. So go to the sides of the index card, excluding obviously the border that we still want to be able to see. So I may not work round systematically. I don't think life is like that when we craft, but I'm just going to add a few pieces to get going at those borders. And although I have one that I've already done, I know that it's going to look different when I fill this page. I can never do a complete repeat, but let me just see what I can do to emulate some of the features here and give you the tips as I go through it. This is a very bold piece. This has lots of drama and impact, and I don't want the whole of the index card to be dominated. However, I do like cheeky elements, and I really like the fact that the brown in this has got something to say about being in the same family as the brown that we used on the border of the card. So I'll put that up there again, I only put glue in the middle and already I can feel calmer and happier because I've started something that feels like I can gradually fill in the middle. I sometimes think the hardest thing about collage is getting going where do you start and as soon as you've started I, I feel like I've kind of narrowed down my options and I don't, don't necessarily know what to do next but by working through this way I feel like it's easy it's an easy technique and method a lovely piece of map paper there and because I don't want a really straight line to be on the index card too often once or twice is fine I don't want to see too many straight lines, I want to feel the roughness of the torn edges. I'm going to tuck this piece under there. And as I'm tucking it under, I'm looking at what's going on down here and whether I can usefully move that right across and fill in some of the space down here. So that works for me. I've got a reasonable size piece of spots, a reasonable size piece here of a little vintage atlas but still capacity to tuck things underneath so I will keep going so you, I think you can see the similarity with the 
the collage cover that I did on the journal but my approach on this one is going all the way round and then filling in at the centre. I really like this off cut. This is from, well I thought it was from one of these Tracy Fox pages. I think it's from the family of this. I think this is the compendium set if you're interested. Is it from here? Oh it's like a game of, it's a puzzle. There we go, it's that little piece there. I just think this is fabulous because it's already got a sense of collage around it. So that's a gorgeous collection if you have it to use in a collage. And this has just got that beautiful writing. So something to think about if you already have it in your collection, that this is something you could make great use of in these little index cards. I do want to get rid of again some of those straight lines. I don't want a, a piece like this. So let's do some tearing. And I think that could go, that could go down at the bottom right. It's a fairly sizeable piece. And as we progress through the collage, I will increasingly use smaller pieces, not only to fill in little gaps, but to add that sense of detail. Maybe something down here. And I don't worry too much if the edge of my piece of paper isn't absolutely straight either. So I think I will add some German here. Barbara 49 Dragonflies, are you watching? So this is a collaboration with a group of really friendly YouTubers around the globe and we're all just doing a project each in the first two weeks of 2021 that bring us joy. We have connected and we just want to share some of our love of paper and paper craft and just do what we can to bring more positivity and joy through our channels. So I will put a link to all of the channels that are in that are in this collaboration in the description box down below. And as we go through, maybe call out some of those channels and the features that I particularly enjoy from each of them. I've mentioned Tracy Fox, others in the collaboration are Gail Agostinelli, how wonderful is her channel and the, the sheer variety of journals that she creates. I've got Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah joining in, Helen Colbrook, many of you might know her. So Roxy Creations, that's Rachel, and the wonderful Andrea Artie Mays, who I know many of you know. I don't know that I want that piece. Too bright. Reject. Sit back, take a moment and have a think about what's going on. So as I get to this stage, when I've got quite a substantial amount of the index card covered, I start to think about the focal point. The focal point that I want to bring onto this one, I'm going to have this man with, I think that's called a fez. So I know that I want it on here. When we created the collage cover, we obviously put it on the top right to be on the front of the journal. This one, I can have anywhere. It's a journal card, an index card. So I will let the pieces of paper tell me whereabouts the balance needs to be. So I think about having a card with balance predominantly thinking right to left. On this one, there was some large pieces of collage paper here and I felt it needed balance on the left. I'm not yet sure where it's going, so I'll have that there as I'm filling in the pieces. I think I'm going to have a bit of spot, top left, yeah, I don't quite want it that big. Some of the fun in this collage comes when we've actually put down the basic layer of matte. So when we come to add detail and add maybe stamping, mica spray, even handwriting, there is no limit to what you can add on these. So on this one, I just used an ink pen, for example, to add some, some words on the page that were bolder than the ones that were already there. I felt it needed it. Some gorgeous thin paper here. I think I will get that under there. So I've pretty much created a border and I'm working to the inside. Tucking that underneath. And I think... That should tuck all the way to the right. So I'll just use my eyes to 
line that up doesn't need to be perfect and I'm going to tuck that under the, that little piece there so I have an under over going on and what I'm going to do is use some of the strength of this paper to get this little piece down and all I've been doing is running a bit of glue along the middle it's quite a liquid glue get that on there and then perhaps use some of the paper that's not yet stuck down to tuck in a little piece. And when we come to sew around the border, it will help hold that little bit of wool down. And it also means I've got some texture on here. As you go through, just think as you look at each piece of paper, how does that feel? What do I think about that little piece? Does it does it tell me it should all be there? Or do I want to just reduce it? Don't sit and think for too long. Just use your first reactions. Let your gut tell you. So that's good because we've got a contrast of map, spot, scrappy book paper and text. Sometimes I will end up putting something on and then covering it up. And I accept that that happens. And if you... Are okay to just go with the flow doing that you'll find that the speed at which you can collage increases and I think the creativity improves as you go along. I'm going to tuck that under there and I like the bold text that black works really well with the, the black here on the bottom left and I'm monitoring that I've got enough going on over here compared with over here so the point about balance and I'm trying to vary the items on the page, albeit still having that vintage feel from them. This is a piece of very vintage ledger paper, which is always good to play with. So perhaps that might just come over here and will help me to cover up some of the, some of the straight line, very strong straight line over here. I just want a little bit more scrappiness going on. I think I'll have it over the top of this one and underneath this one so an over and an under create that sense of layering. One of my tips is don't be limited by the boundary that you have in front of you in terms of the paper. Let's extend that boundary and maybe add a couple of oh, field notes. So I'm going to fold that over, just a little label glue that on there isn't a perfect way that I can say here's the formula for making everything fantastic in a collage and, and neither do I know it I just like to try and share some of the techniques I have for making a page interesting so I've got something going on down here I'm going to have him and I think I'll have something up here glue that on and it's just going to stick out the top a little bit so what I've done here is break the continuous frame that we had on the index card by having something jutting out at the top so the text is on its side and having something going on over here. So we've extended it as well but we've made it more of a surprise to the eye by allowing something to stick out here and here. I think I'll use my little rubber stamp and in terms of colour, maybe a ginger ink pad. This stamp is particularly good because of the digits and it's kind of equivalent to the hand stamp we used when I did those collage cards. So I always added a little bit of extra on the side around the key image. So I'm going to use this before I sew because if I do it after I sew, there'll be areas of the collage card that stick up and don't receive the ink. So let's just get some ink on there. I'm going to have the man here. I think I want, let's try not to make too much of a mess today. I'm going to have this up here and off the page. 
and I'm going to have a bit down here because this is too simple and blank for me. I don't want it upside down but I might have it on its side. How about that? There we go. So I've got texture. I'm going to do a bit of sewing around it and what I like to do is give the border a simple running stitch and then if it feels right add an extra bit of texture with a zigzag. So here's my card that I'm going to sew. I've got a bold thread in my sewing machine that is in a deep wine, a sort of claret colour. I'm going to go around the side with a running stitch and I'm coming within the collage so I will see both the border that we painted a little bit and then I'll see a bit of a gap and then I'm going to sew. So we've really split up the outside border a little bit to give a bit more interest. And the other thing I like to do is start at the top left because when I've finished it means if I do a little bit of a run for and back I get a double piece of sewing top left which gives just a bit more emphasis to the eye at the top left. Tendency I have is to decorate a bit more interestingly on the right hand side so that gives me balance and the other thing it gives me is the ends of the cotton are also at the top left and maybe allowing me to add something more simple down at the bottom right here. So it's all about balance and emphasis, thinking about the detail as we do the sewing. So let's just have a go at putting a border on, really simple. So would you believe my shuttle underneath even ran out on me? So I've just swapped that over. It happens to be black cotton now, but I don't think that matters. I'm going to keep going. So I've got quite a few little cotton threads but doesn't really matter, it's adding more texture and I think that's what I wanted today. I just want to add a bit more detail like I did on this one by way of a zigzag and I think I'm going to bring that down on the left and maybe cut across to the right. So I'm looking for what I call an access point. For me it feels natural to bring it in where a couple of these pieces come together and I also think the extra stitching will help to keep this little piece down and tuck this textured wool behind. I'm just going to go straight down and at this point I'm going to turn it round and then come across to the right. So I've used the stitching to add strength to this piece of paper to hold the wool down and when I turned the corner and came across to the right I did it at a point where I knew that as I met this little piece of label on the right I was roughly getting the sewing to hit it with about a third underneath and two thirds above. It's not quite accurate but I didn't want it to cut in the middle, I wanted it to be asymmetrical so a bit more above than below on this occasion and I really like the the strength of colour and it's quite a thick thread, it's just what I've got going at the moment but it's working for me with these deep winter autumn style collage techniques. So let's now add a little bit more texture, maybe some stamping and the image and we'll see how this finishes up. So I've decided to add this chap, in fact how about the baby? Mm, difficult decision. Now I'm going to stick to this chap because the browns in this are really, really warm and work well with the spotty paper here. But for me, this image is too clean. So I am going to add a little bit of vintage effect. Let's do them across the side so that it's off as opposed to just in the middle. And I'm going to attach that so that it's just sitting proud on this index card and to do that I'm just going to use a tiny piece of, this is 
children's foam that you can get in craft shops to play with. I tend to use this rather than foam pads. It's, let's be honest, it's a little bit cheaper and I can also have a piece the size that I really want. So I'll just add that. This is going to go on here, somewhere to the left, because that's broadly been the idea as we've been creating the collage. Maybe just here. And I'm thinking, again in terms of position, I don't want I don't want the left hand side of this little passport photo picture to be lined up with this behind. So I'm bringing it just to the right a bit so that this is sticking out. So I don't want a continuous line all the way down of the side of this and the side of this. Really like that. And I'm just going to finish it off with a spray of my mica, which will probably show a bit better once it's dried. And that's a vintage style index card with texture using sewing on this occasion and lots of lovely bits of paper scraps. I think I'll have a go at one more and you can let me know how you get on with these and also visit those other YouTubers who are part of this collaboration who are all doing fantastic projects and videos bringing to us their ideas, their design ideas and their passion about paper sharing projects that bring them joy. to see you soon.